Suppose you wanted to multiply 96 by 97. Well, what's the difference between them and 100? 100 minus 96 is 4. 100 minus 97 is 3. Multiply 3 and 4, that's 12. Now 96 minus 3 or 97 minus 4, they'll both give you 93. 9312, that's your answer. 96 times 97 is 9312. Impressed? You're watching Sciences Joe. My name is Pranav and what you just saw was Vedic mathematics. An ancient Indian technique derived from the Vedas that help you do mathematics really fast. Or is it? In this video, I will be debunking the idea of Vedic mathematics because they're not from the Vedas at all. I'll be linking all my sources in the description so you can go read and not just take my word. Now, uh, this is not to say that there are no contributions from India uh, in the world of mathematics. There are a lot of such contributions. I'll be going through them as well in this video, but Vedic Maths is not one of them. With that said, let's begin. Our story takes us back to the early 1900s to the forests around Shringeri where after eight years of solitude and deep meditation, Jagadguru Swamiji Bharati Krishna Tirthaji develops Vedic mathematics. Now he also becomes the Shankaracharya of the Purimat and I'm just gonna call him Swamiji from now on because I don't want this video to be two days long because I kept saying his insanely long name over and over again. So, Swamiji has deep knowledge of the Vedas and he extracts from the Atharva Veda 16 volumes on mathematics based on 16 sutras that he devised. The Vedas, if you didn't know, maybe you're not Indian, maybe you live under a rock, they're ancient Indian texts compiled before 1000 BC. Now, he starts delivering lectures based on his mathematics. He does demonstrations in front of a lot of people. And uh, these are just like demos that I showed you in the beginning of this video where, let's admit it, you were really impressed. And uh, yeah, these lectures are attended by well-respected mathematicians. And yeah, most people are really impressed. And uh, Swamiji also goes abroad in the 50s. He goes to the US, the UK and delivers lectures in universities like Caltech. Now, all of what I've said so far, you can read the way it was originally written in Vedic mathematics. You can download it off of Amazon, you can get it on a Kindle, whatever. Now, in one of his lectures in 1950 in Lucknow, he was met, Swamiji was met by Professor K. Shukla, a well-respected professor of mathematics, and he was asked a question. He asked where in the Atharva Veda, where are the shlokas or the verses located, where from which he devised his 16 sutras and Swamiji said that uh, it was from the Parishishtas which are like an appendix to the Atharva Veda. Now Professor Shukla kind of anticipated this and he had carried a copy of the Atharva Veda with the Parishishtas with him and requested Swamiji to show it to him and to that Swamiji replies and I quote they occurred in his own Parishishta and not any other. Y'all got red flags in your head now, right? Now, Swamiji's version of the Parishishtas have very conveniently never been seen by anyone before that and never since then. Now, this is like if I told you that there was a heaven after death and only I knew how to get there and I had to tell everyone because uh, uh, no one else could access that information. Now this is basically unfalsifiability and to see why there's an issue with that, watch this video. Now this absence of a source and how you can never find the verses if you look through the Atharva Veda now has surprisingly been mentioned in the preface of Vedic mathematics. 
the book literally undermines itself before it even starts now that research paper that i showed you was myths and reality on vedic mathematics by professor shri krishna dani a professor of mathematics at iit bombay now he was the most vocal critic of uh, vedic mathematics and you should read his paper if you are interested i'll link it in the description now swami ji originally claims to have written 16 volumes which once again he very conveniently lost and in 1958 despite failing health he manages to rewrite all of this in one volume and he dies in 1960 and in 1965 this gets published as a book in english called vedic mathematics and that's where we get everything all our knowledge on vedic mathematics its author shrimati manjula trivedi is a disciple of swamiji and has nothing but words of praise for swamiji now the book itself mainly deals with middle and high school mathematics and the 16 sutras help with elementary multiplication all the way up to differential calculus basics of differential calculus the sutras themselves are just short sanskrit phrases two to five words long uh, take this one for example ekadikena purvena this literally translates to by one more than the previous one this can literally be about anything but if you look at the book you can find that each sutra has uh, multiple pages of description in english this is how you say very liberal interpretation now if you tell me pranav maybe there is a sanskrit text that describes this fully in in longer versions in in shlokas and everything yeah um that's possible but remember no one has ever heard of such a version no one has any evidence that this exists all right let's assume that he did get everything from the vedas and he honestly just failed to provide sources and we are just being a little too skeptical here i'm sure there are a lot of people watching who can't wait to comment that i'm being very disrespectful of our culture but uh, even if we grant them that even if we grant swami ji this we still have problems the language style of the sanskrit used in the sutras and those of the vedas are very different and this has been analyzed by sanskrit scholars professor dani also says that uh, the math found in the book is akin to much later mathematics things like calculus developed in india much later after the vedic period the book kind of deals with mathematics that we see in our textbooks that we learn in schools maybe what swamiji learned in his youth now i'm not denying the mathematics that is there in the book it's perfectly valid and if you use these tricks it'll lead you to the right results so why not glorify them you might ask why not teach our children this one reason is that these tricks may be easy to apply but uh, the math is very difficult to understand they skip over the principles of applying mathematics like multiplication is basically repeated addition the same number is added to itself a given number of times but you can never learn any of that by learning vedic mathematics another reason is that the tricks in vedic mathematics apply to very specific scenarios like the trick i showed you in the beginning can only be applied if two numbers are very close to a power of 10 in this case 100 instead of spending time figuring out what trick to use in a particular situation that you encounter in your day to day and then applying the trick you might as well just use regular multiplication and and you'd be better off but the government doesn't seem to understand this they've shelled out massive amounts of public money into teaching vedic mathematics there are state syllabuses that teach vedic mathematics in their textbooks and parents are shelling out money in hopes that their child can learn this and become iit geniuses 
there are also bogus claims about how researchers are applying vedic maths to advanced problems and how vedic maths could lead to improvements in computers all these claims are a far cry from the truth and also mathematicians today don't deal with arithmetic on n digit numbers and and superficial math like the one you find in the book they deal with things like group theory topology uh combinatorial mathematics or gaudic theory uh just to name a few and vedic mathematics offers nothing in the way of advanced mathematics and professor dani says it should not be taken seriously let alone glorified to the level that it is what actually needs to be highlighted are the genuine mathematical achievements of india the shulva sutras which can actually be found in the vedas describe geometrical principles like the pythagoras theorem way before pythagoras ever did india is the origin of the decimal place value system that uses zero as a placeholder there is a jaina school of mathematics which used logarithms there is the kerala school of mathematics which literally invented calculus way before newton or leibniz ever did these are the things to be glorified not something like vedic mathematics but sadly things have a habit of working out differently today if you just search on youtube or google vedic mathematics you'll find hundreds of tutorials and videos that glorify vedic mathematics and um, there are ted talks on the topic and india is one of the oldest civilizations in the world it has contributed to the world concepts such as yoga ayurveda spicy chicken tikka <laughs> and vedic math vedic math is one of the world's easiest and the simplest way to do math in the video he never actually says that vedic mathematics are from ancient india but you would have to be extremely dumb or in extreme denial to say that he doesn't imply that why is this a problem why should we care there's a gap in what's actually true in our history and what's claimed to be true and some of this is probably because uh, our western system of education doesn't really place a lot of emphasis on india's past achievements that sort of leaves us with this void where we know that india has an awesome past but we don't really know what's awesome about it and that void is easily filled by uh, false claims like vedic mathematics please glorify something that's actually true and not something like this the word vedic or the word ancient seems to have some sort of premium with it and is easily used as a marketing ploy there are other false claims like this like how ancient india had advanced aviation technology you can read all about it in this book that book is just like vedic mathematics just even more absurd now there is some political motivations behind this as well because it helps propel certain ideologies very easily but that's probably content for another video in the future uh if you like what you watch till now consider subscribing i'll see you in my next video till then remember science is dope